Hello and welcome to another mathematical studies video. I'm going to go through exponential functions. So what are they? Well, quite simply, it's where the x is an exponent. Uh, so for example, what does it mean that it's an exponent? You have a number to the power of x. For example, here, up to, to the power of x, that would be an exponential function. Or it doesn't have to be a whole number. It could also be, for example, one half to the power of x. Now this is actually going to be important. So uh, what about it? So what's the deal with it? If you if you graph it on your GDC, in your graphic display calculator, this is what you're going to end up with. Something that looks a bit like this. So um, here's, what's, here's what's going on. Note the following things. The range that is a possible values of y, of the y-axis or the f of x-axis, this one here, the range is bigger than zero. There will be no value of x for which the image, that is the value of y, the corresponding value of y, is below zero in the case of this one here, which is the one that's plotted. Similarly, as x gets bigger, so I keep going through here, this one gets really big. Now think about it, that makes complete sense. If I put in the x, I put a 4, I'm going to get 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. If I put a 5, I'm already at 32. If I put a 6, I'm already at 64. It grows really quickly. If I have 2 to the power of like 100, that's a huge number. So, there are different types of exponential functions. Let's look at them. Let's compare this to 2 to the power of x and 1 half to the power of x. If I plot them, this is what they look like. You see, one of them is uh, uh, one of them keeps going up, that's the red one, and the other one keeps going down closer to zero. These ones are actually also a reflection of each other, but we'll talk about this in a minute. The important thing is that uh, f of x to, equals to 2 to the power of x increases very quickly as x increases, whereas the other one decreases very quickly as x increases. So wh what are we going to use these for? Well, one of them is increasing, the other one is decreasing. We're going to model things with these functions. What are we going to model? We're going to model growth and decay. Population is growth and population is decay. Now, the fact that they're a reflection of each other, just to note that it could happen, it's very rare, but it could happen that they write this down this way. This is the same thing as writing it like this. It's very rare that this happens. We'll look at a few examples in class. So I can actually translate these exponential functions. Remember how I could move my quadratic functions around? Well, I can do something similar with my exponential functions. Quite simply, I can move them up and down. For example, 3 to the power of x, another exponential function. What happens if I plot it? 3 to the power of x plus 1 and 3 to the power of x minus 1. This is what's going to happen. This is what it's going to look like. Note that the colors correspond with the functions. So what's happening here? Well, first of all, the value of c, right, in f of x uh, equals a to the power of x plus c. Realize that a here, a is actually the 3. So when the c is 0, Look at where it is. It's over here. When the c is 1, look at where it is. It's over here. And when the c is minus 1, look where it goes. So what's happening here? Well, it's telling you where the range of f of x is. In the case of h of x, the green one, the range is going to be y bigger than minus 1. In the case of the red one, 3 to the power of x, where z is 0, uh, the range is going to be y bigger than 0. Also, note about this c, something very interesting. You realize how, if I'm going from right to left, I keep getting closer here in the case of the red one, I keep getting closer to 0, but I never quite get there. Even if I zoom in a lot here, I would never actually reach 0. We, see, we say that what we have here is a horizontal asymptote which means that I get really close, but I can never actually touch it. In the case of the red one, uh, we'll have horizontal asymptote in y equals 0. The blue one at y equals 1, and the red one at y equals minus 1. What do we do with exponential functions? We're going to, as I said, we're going to model growth and decay. So, for example, if I have this one here, f of t equals a to the power of t, if a is bigger than 1, we're going to have growth. It's going to go up. And if a is between 0 and 1, we're going to have decay. We're going to have that it goes down. This is actually very important. Furthermore, let's look at an actual example just to finish this off. 
Here I have a particular type of bacteria is modeled by this function. This is growth because realize that 20 divided by 13 is going to be bigger than 1. So we're going to have growth. And t is the time in hours. They ask me to calculate the population after a day. After that, they ask me to figure out how many hours will it take to have a population of 1 times 10 to the power of 12. Can you try to do this by yourself? Pause the video if you want and give yourself a shot. Now, let's solve it. Here is the same exercise. So let's start by doing part A. Now, we know that day has 24 hours. So what I have to do to figure out a population after 24 hours is simply put 24 here. And I'm going to solve the equation with my graphic display calculator. And I'm going to get 92,700 bacteria rounded to three significant figures. Now, part B is going to be a bit more tricky. Because we know, we need to know when will p to the power of uh, uh, t exceed 1 times 10 to the power of 12. So I need to know when this happens. Realize, I just realize, well, when, when is this going to be the same? And then, let, then I will choose the first hour that's bigger than that. Now, in order to figure this out, we're going to use the plotting, uh, the, um, we're going to use the graph plotting of the calculator. So I plot this in the calculator. Now, if I do that, I won't see much because uh, if I graph it, because I need to adjust the window settings. Now, the way to do this is to make sure, and it's important, that you, you put as y max, just change the number that's multiplying and put it to instead of a 1. If you add a 2 here, put a 4. Because that way, when you graph it, it's going to be in the middle. Now, if you go to the calc option, to the calc menu, you'll be able to find the intersection. And I find an intersection is going to be when x equals 61.591135, etc. Now the exercise wants the whole hour, which is why I'm going to choose t equals 62. And that's how you solve the exercise. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.